In this video I'm going to show you three cinematic sequences and afterwards we're going to go through them so you can become a better filmmaker. And most important of all, I'm going to prove you that you don't need to move your camera. As new videographers, we tend to think that we need to move our camera to have great videos. I don't know what it is, but you're just pulled towards feeling like you have to move your camera. <laughs> I mean, I'm not the only one. One of the first accessories we usually buy to improve our filmmaking is a gimbal. Thank the YouTube travel videos for that. They're a hassle to bring, a pain in the ass to set up and to balance, and they also limit your movement. I wanted to shoot this location for a pretty long time already because I always pass it when I'm going to work. There's just this beautiful symmetry, all these leading lines and the epic lighting, especially when it's blue hour or at night. That's really awesome. The biking path and the lights of the tunnel really pull you towards your subject, especially when you place it right in the middle of the biking path. Then you know that you just have to pay attention to your subject over there. In the first shot, I'm entering from the rule of thirds line from the left, while the bike is centered in the frame. And this is one of my three favorite shots of this little sequence. This is my second favorite shot because of the leading line of the single row of lights and the high contrast of this clip. I also really love the color contrast over here. With all of these sequences, I try to get all kinds of different angles because in the past, I just visit the location, shoot from two angles, and that's it. Now I really try to get some low, high, side angle shots just as much as I possibly could. I really like this shot because of the graphics right in the middle, which allowed for an almost perfectly symmetrical composition. I took advantage of this by getting off my bike in the middle as well, which allowed for a really pleasing shot. And this is my third favorite shot of the sequence. These honor shots are honestly just fillers, but I really like this train shot because it's just a vibe. All of these sequences are shot on an anamorphic lens and they really help to emphasize the symmetrical aspect of the whole scene because this is the Sirui 35mm T2.9 Saturn lens and it has a squeeze factor of 1.6. This means that if you divide the 35mm focal length through 1.6, you get a 22 or 24mm field of view in the width, so that's really cool. By using a tripod, I've noticed it'll make you pay way more attention to your surroundings. And I believe that noticing compositions is single-handedly one of the biggest skills that can elevate your filmmaking and even photography. Leading lines, rule of thirds, looking for repeating patterns, framing your subject, frame locking. In this first shot, I wanted to capture this nice sunset and came up with this symmetrical composition of the corner of the car parking. In the second shot, I used the arrow as the leading line since it's pointing towards me, which says you need to pay attention to me. The third one is just <laughs> a very pleasing symmetrical shot. I mean, it was pretty obvious and I knew that this spot had all these awesome leading lines and symmetry over here. In this one, I was just walking in the direction of the arrow and I really liked the repetition of the two buildings behind each other. I really found this shot aesthetically pleasing. In this one, I positioned myself on the left side of the rule of thirds while watching the moon. I also framed the moon in between these two and lanterns on purpose. This is pretty much the same shot like before. I framed the moon in between these two lanterns and I put myself on the left side of the rule of thirds. But over here, the fence also acts as a leading line towards me. This one is honestly just a vibe as well. I found this a really pleasing image. There is so much going on, yet it's satisfying to look at because of all the lines of the road and the cars and the tram passing by. There's just so many layers and aspects and details to this image that, that just make it interesting in my opinion. I really like this one as well because of the framing through the lens, which added an extra layer of depth. I first shot it without the fence, but it looked way better and way more interesting with the fence included. Trying to shoot video as if you would shoot a photo is another little hack. Still shots also allow the viewer to really take in all the details of the shot. 
Don't get me wrong, there is a time and place for camera movement, but try to be more thoughtful about it. If every shot would be perfectly stabilized, it would become boring after a while. Imagine you're watching a movie and someone's life is threatened, like someone is trying to kill this person, but this person is trying to run away. Imagine that we just have like a perfectly stabilized shot following this guy just running away. It wouldn't really emphasize the urgency and the chaos and the fear of this man. And that's why you would want to shoot this shot handheld running behind this guy and yeah, really try to make it super chaotic. On the other hand, when you would watch a romantic movie and you see two people coming closer to each other and they're going to kiss each other, you don't want to shoot this handheld. You'd probably want to make it a stabilized shot or just a tripod shot so viewers can really take in all the emotions and all the feelings. Add some melancholic music, the right sound effects, and voila, it'll hit you right in the feels. <laughs> so you just gotta find the right mix between handheld shots, stabilized shots, and tripod shots. This could also be like a creative choice of the director, and depending from the feelings and the emotions you want to evoke or the message you want to convey, you could switch it up between all these different shot types. I really love the first one, because the building looks so nice with these orange lights, which contrasts beautifully with the blue sky due to blue hour. And then I also added a side angle to make the scene a bit more interesting. I really like this one in which I entered the hallway because you can still see me through the window and you can see the next action I'm actually going to take. In these shots of me going down the stairs, I mainly use the guardrails as leading lines. And I try to set up the camera in the middle of this hallway. In this last one, I use the side angle, which I believe gives really interesting lines. Because you can see the guardrails leading towards me, which tells you you need to pay attention towards me. This is just a beautiful symmetrical shot with me on the left side of the rule of thirds. I really like this one because of the triangle shape in the lights. And that's something I always try to do. I always try to look for shapes and lines. This is a pretty basic shot with me walking in the middle. And the next ones are on tripod shots but still want to include them since I really liked them. And I had to be pretty quick because I already packed my tripod. And this last one with the tram. It's just vibes, like these night vibes, almost like Tron vibes or something. This one really hits hard. Let me know in the comments which sequence or which shot was actually your favorite. This place was honestly super aesthetical. You obviously don't get all this symmetry and leading lines and shapes everywhere. But if you really look around you, you can find shapes and leading lines everywhere because usually when you have an architect, they also try to include patterns and symmetry and lines, so it's just everywhere around you. You just gotta open your eyes. Honestly, just try to put your camera on a tripod a bit more. Try to think of shooting a video as if you would take a photo, because when you have a still image, like a still video, then this will allow your viewer to get really sucked in and they can really like focus on all the different details and all the different aspects that you included in your video. Like for example, if you really put lots and lots of effort into set design, then you obviously want your viewer to notice all the little details and all the little things. And it would really suck if you would have like a gimbal shot and you would just quickly turn around it and in one second you go over to the next clip. That would suck, right? And obviously there is a time and place for camera movement. When you look at Hollywood movies, they also have lots of handheld shots, lots of shots on stabilizers, but they're really put into the movie with purpose to convey a certain message to make you feel something. And that should be the key point of this video, together with the fact that you just have to pay more attention towards compositions. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you'll definitely enjoy this one over here as well. Peace.